Hello, and welcome to the June edition of Sepsis Chatter. My name is Susan Von Bossi, and I am Quality Consultant for Registry Partners Incorporated. Today's presentation is titled Severe Sepsis, Septic Shock, and Infection, Abstracting the Earliest Documented Time from One Provider Note. This presentation will focus on the data elements, severe sepsis, and septic shock present. We will discuss determining the earliest onset time of severe sepsis, septic shock, and or infection when documented in a single provider note. The information provided in this presentation is based on the CMS Specifications Manual for National Hospital Inpatient Quality Measures, discharges January 1st through June 30th, 2022. In addition, this information will also remain valid for discharges July 1st through December 31st, 2022. At the completion of this presentation, the attendee will be able to use the current CMS abstraction guidance to determine the earliest time of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection included in a provider note in the following situations. When a time directly attached to severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection is included in a provider note. When multiple times are directly associated with documentation of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection in one provider note. When there is no time directly associated with documentation of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection within one provider note. And lastly, when more than one instance of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection is documented with and without times attached in one provider note. Before we review the specific provider note scenarios, let's perform a quick overview of severe sepsis present. We know that there are two ways to determine the onset of severe sepsis. The first and most direct way to determine if severe sepsis is present is provider documentation. The specifications manual is very clear regarding who can document severe sepsis and septic shock. It must be a physician, advanced practice nurse, or a physician's assistant. The specifications manual is clear about what is acceptable wording. Only exact wording for severe sepsis, septic shock, and severe sepsis with shock is acceptable. Documented septic shock would imply that the patient met severe sepsis criteria also. Clinical criteria met is the second way to determine the presence of severe sepsis. All required clinical indicators must be met within six hours of each other in no particular order. The documented infection, two SERS indicators, and documented organ dysfunction. Whichever clinical indicator is met last would determine the onset timing. However, for the purpose of this presentation, we will assume that the documentation of infection included in the provider note is the last clinical indicator that will determine the onset of severe sepsis or septic shock. In this first example, the EDMD documented the following on 3.30.22. The note open time was 10 o'clock. The time seen was 11 o'clock. The final diagnosis, severe sepsis, was documented at 12 o'clock. Based on the current specifications manual, if a time is directly attached to the documentation of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection in a provider note, and it is the earliest time identified, use this time as the presentation time. So severe sepsis has the 12 o'clock attached to it, therefore we would use the 12 o'clock as the onset time. In this example, the EDMD documented the following within the same note on 3-2-22. ED course, 11-45, I suspect severe sepsis. 12-10, differential diagnosis, severe sepsis. Admitting diagnosis, severe sepsis at 12-30. According to the current abstraction guidelines, 
If severe sepsis or septic shock is documented multiple times within the same note, use the earliest specified time. For this scenario, severe sepsis is documented at three different times within the same provider note. So we would use the earliest documented time at 11.45. According to the specifications manual, for documentation of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection included in a provider note that does not have a date or time directly linked, or severe sepsis or septic shock is noted as POA, the following applies. If it is the only documentation of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection within the note, use the time the note was started or open. Note open, note started, date and time at the top of the note. Authored date of service, perform time, result time are not the same as note open and note started time and should not be used as the first source of timing. Let's take a look at the following example. This patient presents to the ED 3822 at 10 a.m. Per the ED vitals flow sheet, at 10.05, the pulse was 120 and the respiratory rate was 24. At 10.20, the blood pressure was 80 over 55. The ED provider began documenting at 10.45. The timestamp at the top of the note is labeled Note Open 3822-1045. At the end of the note, the final diagnosis, pneumonia, HCAP, start fluids, IV antibiotics, and draw labs. Because the MD did not enter a time when he documented the final diagnosis, we would use the note open time as the infection time. Because the other clinical indicators were met prior to the time of infection, the onset is 1045, the note open time being the last clinical indicator met. If the note open or note started time cannot be determined, use the following guidance and source hierarchy located in the current data dictionary, page 1-138. This guidance states, if a timestamp reflecting the note open or started time is unavailable, use the following sources in priority order. The provider patient care initiated time, the time seen, the contact time, Second is the scribe time, and the third is the earliest time at the beginning of the note reflecting when the note was open or started. Let's take a look at this example. All clinical indicators for SIRS and organ dysfunction were met per EMS documentation prior to arrival. Per EDMD note, the timestamp at the top of the note reads as follows. Performed 1522 at 1050. Per EDMD, time seen 11 o'clock. Within the body of the note, the EDMD documented diagnosis, suspect UTI, will order antibiotics, fluids, and labs. Note that the diagnosis of UTI has no time attached to it. Keep in mind that the performed time would be the last time to consider since it is not synonymous with note open or start time. Using the hierarchy, we would assign a time to the documentation of UTI, in this case, time seen at 11 o'clock. Let's take a look at our last example for today. This patient arrived at the emergency room via EMS. SIRS and organ dysfunction were met prior to arrival. The EDMD note includes the following. Per MD, time seen 11 o'clock. The timestamp at the top of the note states authored 1522-1050. Within the body of the note, the MD documented medical decision making, suspect UTI and possible lower left extremity osteomyelitis, will order antibiotics, fluids, x-ray, and podiatry consult. The end of the note includes diagnosis UTI 1522 at 12 o'clock. So in this scenario, 
an infection was documented multiple times within the same note. Which time would we abstract as the infection onset of severe sepsis time? The earliest infection documented is 11 o'clock, the time seen, and also severe sepsis presentation time. The rationale for this is as follows. It's true that the UTI has the specific time of 12 o'clock attached to it in the diagnosis. If the UTI was the only qualifying documentation of infection included, 12 o'clock would be infection and onset of severe sepsis time. Since suspected UTI and possible lower left extremity osteomyelitis has no time attached, the osteomyelitis would be assigned the first priority source time associated with provider patient care initiated time, which would be the time seen, contact time, etc. at 11 o'clock. So the onset would be 11 o'clock. So our takeaways from today are as follows. Always refer to the current CMS abstraction guidance to determine the earliest time of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection included in a provider note. The earliest time directly linked to provider documentation of severe sepsis, septic shock, or infection within the same note should be abstracted. When no time is directly associated with documentation of severe sepsis, septic shock, or an infection in one provider note, use the time that the note was open or started. When more than one infection is documented with and without times attached in one provider note, it is necessary to first assign times based on the current specifications hierarchy and then determine the earliest time documented. For further information, please refer to the current specifications manual for National Hospital Inpatient Quality Measures, also the Sepsis Alliance, and for any queries, please submit to the QNET question and answer tool. Thank you for attending Sepsis Chatter today. I appreciate your attention and hope to see you next month.